Hurricane Helene made landfall as a major Category 4 hurricane last night, and unfortunately, this is not done causing problems across the United States, because over the next couple of days, we are going to continue to see this lift to the north, bring the potential for more gusty winds that could lead to power outages, a few more tornadoes today, and then also the continuation of flooding across parts of the United States. Behind this, we could see another tropical storm or hurricane form in the Caribbean Sea and go into the Gulf of Mexico as we go into next week as well. So we're going to talk all about this in today's forecast. We will begin with what Hurricane Helene looks like, which as of now, it's starting to be downgraded over time. But this is continuing to move to the north, northeast into Georgia. It has actually taken a more easterly track than initially forecasted. But nonetheless, we are still seeing heavy rain for most of the southeast. This moisture band also expands all the way back up even into areas into parts of Virginia, even up into West Virginia. So a little bit of beneficial rainfall is continuing to move to the north with what's remaining of Helene. This is a closer view of when Hurricane Helene made landfall yesterday, in case you didn't watch our landfall live stream. Again, just an unbelievable hurricane that made landfall yesterday with maximum sustained winds at 140 miles per hour. It was a historic hurricane, the first ever Category 4 plus hurricane to make landfall in the Big Bend of Florida, believe it or not. We do have the potential for tornadoes with what's left of Helene. We are going to be watching for an elevated tornado threat this morning into the early afternoon in North and South Carolina. So have a tornado action plan ready to go. Also, tornadoes will be possible as far east, or sorry, as far west as eastern Tennessee, and then also as far north as central and northern Virginia. But it should be a lower risk the further north you go from uh, North Carolina, and also the further west you go from North Carolina. And then by Saturday, the tornado threat, we're pretty much not talking about any more tornadoes, I think, for a little while here in the United States. Now let's go region by region, beginning with the Southeast United States. And for the rest of this morning, we're really not talking about much else other than rain in northern parts of Georgia. By this afternoon, things are really clearing out. We might have some more showers as we go into Saturday morning, but overall, the weather looks pretty nice. We're going to start to dry out across most of the Southeast after this morning. And the winds overall are going to continue to die down. The worst of the wind right now in Northeast Georgia, back into upstate South Carolina with wind gusts near 60 to 70 miles per hour. But most of Georgia, South Carolina, in Florida going to be dying down by lunchtime and as we go into the afternoon things are going to be beautiful. We're going to have a lot more sunny skies I think for much of the southeast United States by this evening. In terms of rainfall accumulation this also includes what we've seen over the last six hours or so. We are still expecting several inches of rainfall predominantly though from here on out in upstate parts of Georgia and as well as back up into upstate South Carolina and back over in the higher elevations of North Carolina as well where the potential for catastrophic flooding will exist throughout the rest of this morning into the early afternoon. Now, the Mid-Atlantic is a completely different story. Obviously, with the tornado threat, we could see several tornadoes during the morning hours. We are going to be watching that threat mostly along the coastline. So if you're near South Carolina or Southern North Carolina, be prepared for the possibility for a few tornadoes during the mid to late morning and also into the afternoon hours. Have a tornado action plan ready to go as well. There is a chance that we go live for this, but I would say it's on the low side of things. Just make sure that you're subscribed to the channel in case we do go live. Eventually, by 10 to 11 a.m., the tornado threat will continue to move into eastern North Carolina, low-end tornado threat back over in parts of northern North Carolina and southern Virginia. And after lunchtime, the threat is going to die down really fast. I think we're talking about maybe one or two tornadoes after about 12 o'clock, maybe again, ba basically back over in eastern North Carolina. And after that, we're done with this tornado threat and the rain will also start to wind down for the most part as we go into Saturday. So that's some good news there. Wind gusts back over here in the mid-Atlantic will be relatively high throughout the morning hours, 50 to 60 miles per hour for many areas, and that wind will also move into the Ohio Valley, staying strong, but areas like Virginia, North Carolina, and South Carolina will start to simmer down as we go into the afternoon, and then eventually by the evening hours, the wind is pretty much dead in those areas. And then in terms of rainfall accumulation, again, a potential for catastrophic flooding will exist back over in parts of the higher elevations of North Carolina and South Carolina, where we could see a widespread four to eight inches of rain on top of what we've already seen, which is just not needed, and then back over in Virginia, North Carolina, Carolina and South Carolina back further to the east, things look a little bit more reasonable with maybe a half an inch to a few inches of rain. And back even over in the Ohio Valley, which we're going to talk more about here in a second, a lot of rain will be coming here over the next 48 hours because we're just going to continue to see this trough go into the Fujiwara effect. We're going to have this hurricane merge with another low pressure system and it's going to become one big low pressure system. That will allow for this thing to stretch out and bring plenty of light to moderate rain for many of the Ohio, many Ohio Valleyans as we go into Friday night to Saturday 
morning. I don't know if that's even a thing. And then once we go into Saturday morning, the rain starts to simmer down quite a bit. We'll still be dealing with some light to moderate rain in parts of the Ohio Valley, and it will continue to spin even into Sunday. But again, other than just some rain, we're not really expecting any like severe weather or anything like that. Wind gusts will be pretty high throughout the morning and afternoon in Kentucky. Wind gusts up near 65 to 70 miles per hour. Wind will stay high even into Illinois and Indiana, and then eventually as we go into Saturday morning, there will still be some wind, and even into Sunday, there will still be some wind, but it's again not going to be that significant. Wouldn't rule out though some isolated to scattered power outages through the late morning across parts of Kentucky and Tennessee. Then in terms of total rainfall accumulation across the Ohio Valley, we are expecting several inches of rain over the next few days. It will be mostly spread out, but the most amount of rainfall will fall today, and then tomorrow there will be some rainfall, and then by Sunday it's really just winding down in nature. This is the weather predictions forecast in terms of excessive rainfall over the next 24 to 48 hours. Again, notice the bulk of the rain will again be in the higher elevations of both North Carolina and South Carolina. And then we still have that high risk for excessive rainfall that's in place, mainly for those higher elevations. So continue to stay weather aware there. We do need to talk about the tropics because we are going to have more problems as we go into October, unfortunately. It's been active with Helene. We also have Tropical Storm Isaac that developed up in the northern Atlantic Ocean over the last 48 hours. But notice we have an area of development back over east of the Lesser Antilles. This one I'm not expecting to impact the United States at all. This one over here, though, in the Caribbean Sea has about a 30% chance of development over the next seven days, and this is brand new, came in yesterday, and this area could be concerning if we do see something develop, because we could see another tropical storm or hurricane form in the Caribbean Sea and go into the Gulf of Mexico and cause even more problems on top of what we saw with Helene. So we're going to show you the computer models here in a second, kind of give you an idea of what might happen and why there's still reason to believe that this might not even form. This is what it looks like across the entire tropics over the next several days. So again, notice we might have something develop here east of the Lesser Antilles. Watch how it just kind of moves to the north and dies out really fast, so not a big concern. This right here is what we're watching. Potential development by Monday or Tuesday of early next week is when we'd be watching for something to try to form here in the Caribbean Sea. And as it moves to the northwest, it might actually enter right through that Yucatan Channel, similar to what Helene did. Notice how it's not really that intense, though, by Wednesday, according to the GFS model. Eventually, by Thursday to Friday, notice how it starts to intensify in the Gulf of Mexico into actually near a hurricane status by Thursday of next week, and then eventually it just kind of sits in the Gulf and really doesn't move much, and the main reason why, by the way, is because we're not really going to have any steering factors in the United States next week. So if something forms in the Gulf, it could stall there for several days, and we could end up talking about something that really intensifies because of how slowly it's moving, and then eventually the GFS model has this going into areas like Louisiana by the time we go into early uh, the following week, but keep in mind the GFS model has been inconsistent when it comes to the placement of this in the Gulf of Mexico. The first run had it back in the Southwest Gulf. The second one had it crashing into Florida. This one's now in the Northern Gulf. It's all over the place. There's no, you know, point forecasting where this is going to be. It's just something we're watching. And the reason why is because this could be our next hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico. So again, stay aware if you're along the Gulf Coast. I'm not saying we're definitely going to see this, but it is something we'll be watching for if it tries to develop over the next few days. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe if you've not already.